Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Virtual Friday's Dire Literary Series. And we've started our spring series season with our first um, feature, and it's uh, Sandra Simons. And uh, joining us from Tallahassee, Florida, where it didn't snow today, correct? No, it didn't. <laughs> but let, me, uh, let me show you a little bit about uh, Sandra. And uh, there she is. Um, in read along at home, but she has written seven books of poetry. Um, her latest, her last book, uh, Atopia, came out in 2019. She said poems in the New Yorker, the New York Times, Best American Poetry, 2014 and 2015. Um, she has been in a lot of really, really fine uh, journals like Granta and Plowshares and Fence. And, um, you know, without anything more out of me, um, let's turn it right over to Sandra. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming, watching Timothy. Um, when he invited me, I was like, he said, oh, you can read for five minutes. And I was like, what? Five minutes? That's funny. Like, I've, no one's ever asked me to read for five to five minutes. And then he said, but, but then I, I guess I read the email too quickly because it's an open mic. Well, I really love open mics. and. Um, I have a lot of fun memories of um, those experiences uh, when I started as a poet uh, in Los Angeles because there's a bookstore there called Midnight Special that's no longer there and um, I do open mics so it was really fun to do that and I always have my students um, read that way as well so I think it's great the format I love that. Um, I'm going to read, I'm going to actually share my screen um, because, oh, wow, okay, someone said they knew Midnight Special, that's really exciting, uh, <laughs> it's a very wonderful bookstore uh, in Santa Monica. So I'm going to share my screen uh, this time, I haven't done that yet, but I think the format of the poems uh, would be good to, sh to share the screen, so I'm just going to uh, do that and I'm going to read just a few and then I guess we'll do the open mic part of the reading so let me I haven't timed this or anything like that so we'll see um, what happens so can you see this okay good um so I wrote a book of triptychs um and I've been reading during the pandemic People have asked me to read, so I've been reading out of this new book. So they're all in three columns. Um, the poems are in three columns, but they're not, um, they're not three different poems. They're sort of three different poems, but they, in my mind, in my mind's eye, uh, they kind of come together. So through the title, uh, it kind of pulls them together. And I like the idea of having three distinct, sort of distinct narratives, but also coexisting as one. So sometimes people say, oh, I liked your three poems. And I'm like, no, no, it's one poem. Like this is one poem with, I think, three parts or something like that. So um, I, this is gonna be in the Chicago Review. I'm really, it's kind of sending out the last poems in this book. So um, I'm gonna read the uh, two of them that are gonna come out in the Chicago Review. Um, in the next issue or the next one, I'm not sure which one. Uh, so this is why I think uh, sharing the screen is good for this. Okay, and this title of this poem, I think I got it from a Ted Berrigan uh, poem, but I also think Ted Berrigan got it from Ed Dorn. So I think it's a it's a recycled title. Um, it's so I don't feel bad. <laughs> Stealing this because I think Ted Bergen also stole. Okay, so this one is called And the Days Shall Be Filled with Music. Off the, and I've not read this one yet. So off the gridded landscape, unraveling palindromes, thinking of your dirty apartment, box of special K ripped open on the ironing board. They flee at once in homophonic substitutions and I cultivate red chili peppers, laid the harvest on the lines between plain text ciphers and they glowed forensically. 
You could see the grave stretch from sky to tears in correct numer numerical sequence. Drone footage denatured the great eyeball of machine learning to think as an unblinking predator as off on patterns in the containment contaminated atmosphere. Oh, 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 lovely, lovely bridge. Speechless couplets. What did you make of the morning inside the workflow? Flow of the unreal follows after you have slept all the way through the typography of a dream of stars inside the teleported body of each word, footage you transpose or transcribe. I go to the coffee shop with my cyclonic hair, aleph tied in a knot, lovely with a scrunchie, and I am happy and order an espresso. And when the vulture lands on the grate across from my round table, it becomes a lover, an eclipse, an excess of spirit. You feast on the dead, I say. It pulls a tendon out of the carcass with its curved beak. No, he says, that's what poets do. <clears throat> um, okay, this is the last one. Uh, like imprisoning what a pressing need, oh, like imprisoning a pressing need, you long to die deeper than the sea with waves unorganized, pa passed over rhapsodic in ion rhizome, one or two particles crystallize in the shrubs. She walked towards the mountain. She believed it would form a dream, a dream form engulfed by crypts. Uh, alrighty, so I'm gonna do um, the next one. The next one is on page 54. I think I can... Excuse my scrolling here. I'm gonna scroll pretty much through this entire book. Okay, this is the... I feel like we do a lot of scrolling. <laughs> it's all scrolling. It's like a who knew that we would spend our lives scrolling and clicking. Um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't, that's not something I, if, if someone told me that when I was 10 or 11, my son's age, I wouldn't have understood. But, um, okay, so this is the second one. It also has vultures in it. So I kind of connect them in my mind. Um, this one is um, an interesting uh, story in this because it, if you've ever been to the Everglades, um, there are vultures that sort of um, land on people's cars and they um, are attracted to the, the windshield wipers, they think, the whatever rubber. And so um, you have to put this tarp over uh, the car. The park gives a, a tarp and it's, um, it's startling really because you're going there to see all these beautiful animals supposedly. And um, there's these vultures that I guess carry their own symbolic weight. So um, this is called Reading the Bell Jar in the Ever Everglades National Park. When Esther Greenwood is almost raped, why can't she connect what happened to her downward spiral from throwing designer clothes off the hotel balcony to her unwashed hair, electroshock therapy, and worse? Slut, the guy kept saying, slut, 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 where's my diamonds, slut? In sixth grade science class, there was a boy who liked to light the hair of girls on fire. The science teacher laughed, ha, ha, ha. She didn't believe us when we told her, ha, 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 until the smell of Heidi's burnt braid mixed with the chalk powder that fell off the enormous grave green board. It rained all day 
Then I read your poetry. I lied twice, first when I told you I wasn't afraid of rain, and then when I put it in the poem. So I unfolded the piece of paper where the poem was and wrote a true story. Eight or 10 vultures on top of a Corolla pecking at a blue tarp, the Everglades National Park provided their visitors. I texted Alex, vultures are the bird form of roaches. Then one of them looked at me. They were, there were vultures everywhere in the swimming pool, vomiting, shitting, blood, blood, blood. It was gross, said Mrs. Delamo, who bought a $700,000 vacation home in West Palm where the birds invaded. It wouldn't stop looking. All the other birds were packing away at the blue tarp to get to the windshield wipers which apparently gives off the scent of a carcass when the plastic melts in the sun. Save me, save me, save me, I said, but the vulture, but it wouldn't look away. Here's the third one. Sorry, I've got kids. My name is Esther Greenwood. Sometimes I get a bad idea and I follow through on it. That's the difference between me and other people. Other people get distracted by roasting a chicken or watching TV, but I am carnal. I know the difference between killing yourself and stepping down the spiral staircase into the cellar of the self, that really meaty, stringy place wrapped in shadows, booming with an arterial pulse, so that if you were to kill it, it would mean something. Now look at me. Look at the mirror I'm holding up. You can smash it. There's another face behind it and another one behind that. Just like stars, they are endless and stretch obliviously in their cold calculations. It is Christmas Eve, so go ahead, smash it. I'm sure someone out there is in love with me. I don't know, with time, what are we, should we, should that be it? Yeah, let's do the let's do the Q and A. So if you could yeah. remove the screen share oh, here. Yeah. Sorry, oh, sorry about that. Yeah. So I thought it was wonderful to have the screen there. So if people want for the uh, moderation of this, just to put uh, some questions in the chat, and I'll I can ask them as they as they come through. So, do you have an entire book of triptychs? Are you working on this, or is this just something that you're enjoying doing right now? Oh yeah, I just um I just finished this. But mm -hmm. they're all triptychs, so, yeah. So, so why triptychs? And uh, is there a consistent pattern within them in the columns throughout the book? Um, well, to answer the latter part, um, consistent meaning how to read them or um, some, I don't know what, I guess, consistent in their form or I guess I don't understand. In their form, like, for example, this doesn't ring true in yours, like the uh, maybe the first column is first person, second column is third person, etc. Oh, and no, it's that no, way throughout no. the book. Oh, no, 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 they, they're, they're just variations on the form. Sorry, that's a little bit loud. It's dinner time. Um, no, they're not. There's they, I, I used pretty much each um, poem as an opportunity to kind of play with the form. So like the first one, you could see the the words were close there the patterns were closer together so that the words from the first column sometimes went in closer to the second column but I only did that with one poem and um I just really tried to to have the form the three columns but try to vary it through each like sometimes they're different stories and things like that other yeah and then why trip to I don't know I it's it curious I actually you know what I do have there you go I could, um, so I had this like paper, this paper, and I was writing them um, on this paper, like strips. I was, I read a lot of A.R. Ammons, and um, so I was doing these strips. So I, I don't know if that was kind of the genesis of, um, you know, writing one, and then I'd write the next one. I don't exactly know how I got, how I got the idea, but. 
it's been, it's been really fun. Different. That's really cool. Uh, so John asks, uh, what's the purpose of the brackets in your poems and how should they be read? Oh, um, well, I only use them in that one poem. Um, and I get, I mean, you'd have to see it, but uh, you can where the brackets are, I tried to make it so that um, if a bracket was around one word in one column and then you could read it as a part of a syntactical unit and if the bracket extended to the second column, you could read that in there as a, it, I thought that was kind of fun and um, interesting, so. Yeah. So this book, when would you expect it to come out? I don't know. I just said, <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, everyone's like, asked me that. And uh, I don't, you know, it's like, I have to, you know, I finished it. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Hopefully, you know, at some point in the relatively near future, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, I hope you find a publisher for that work that can actually make the book larger in size. So the yeah, columns will that's... actually fit through. That's the thing with being an artist. I think sometimes you follow an idea and then you're like, oh shit, like this is gonna be a lot harder to make for that. I, I think it's I think of it as their problem, you know, that they, they hopefully they can figure out how to negotiate that. But um yeah, it is it is gonna be a little bit of a challenge, I think. As as a poetry artist, are you constantly thinking about how to be outside the box? Um, I, I think, I mean, I don't think of it as being out. I, I, I try to keep it interesting for myself. So like, I don't like to do the same thing over and over again, because for me, I just get bored. So I, 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 I like to do things I like to try to new things. So I don't think it's so much like, I'm like, how am I gonna be different from other people? Or how am I gonna do this? It's more like organic, um, like I wanna do something um, that interests me or I follow something that I feel like is interesting. That, that's more, it's more like that for me, yeah. So Jeffrey asks, are there visual artists that have inspired how you write poems? Oh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I love the visual art. So I, I guess somewhat, you know, just the way that space is used on the page. Um, it's, uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, triptychs are visual. And actually, Summer and I have collaborated. I don't know if she's still here, but um, so Summer has done some art, artwork. Oh, hi. Um, the to sort of triptychs in art and I wish I had one that we, I could show you but um, we've paired them and so we've sent those out too and that's been really fun and sort of like the play between um, the history of the triptych in art has been really um, that's been really delightful and um, I I like those a lot really I like cool to work with they, other people <laughs> yeah that's really cool that the artist is here too yeah uh, so yeah yeah. John is asking about the connection between the bell jar and vultures, how they worked in your poem. And was this an intended, or did it just happen to come upon that by chance? Um, that's a good question. I actually went to the Keys over the um, Christmas break, and um, I was alone. And um, I, I actually didn't read the book in the park. I was teaching it and I listened to the audio on the way back um, from the park and somehow I don't know you know that book really uh, it very much depressed me and I don't know if I'm going to teach it again it, it gave me a, a strange feeling that I had never had of like real just sadness and um, depression and um, somehow that just you know how it is when you're writing things kind of in your mind they kind of start mixing and um the vultures were scary you know and they're 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 scary when they they're very large birds when you get so close to them and um you know they frighten me <laughs> and uh maybe they shouldn't i maybe i need to take a class on vultures and learn about how wonderful they are i'm sure they're wonderful birds but 
<laughs> now, your last book, Utopia, which came out in 2019, it was there's a lot in a lot of uh, influence or of subject matter about social media and politics. Was there a way to not write about politics during the previous president's four years or? Um, I guess, I mean, I guess you could, I guess you do whatever you want, right? I mean, you can let as much of the world in or not. I guess for me, it was, uh, it was a way to process what was happening, so. Uh, also, I, I saw on your website that, um, your, book, your books were described as a tour de, for, de force and compared to Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, Ginsburg's Howl, and Noel Coquit's Poem for the End of Town. That's high praise. When you first saw that, what was it, what, how did you feel about all that? Uh, is that like in a blurb or something? Yeah, it's a, it <laughs> might have been in a book review. It looked like it was in a book review. Well, that's, I don't deserve that. I'm, I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. That's really sweet. But but someone felt you deserved it. I mean, uh, it's not every day that you know I talk to a poet that's been in two of the best American poetry uh, series because I get that every year. I, I purchase that book, and uh, you know, was there a letdown in two thousand and sixteen? <laughs> Uh, you mean because of the election or oh because of the no the, because you're in 2014 and 2015 of that yeah no I I, I guess so yeah I don't <laughs> I didn't think about it too much <laughs> so as, so as a poet where are you at because um I remember as an early poet it was like wow someone published me and then the second stage is wow I got in here and someone with as many um extremely uh, high journals that you're in, like, where, where do you stand like when you're submitting? Like, what, what is your feeling? Um, well, I don't submit as much as I used to. I feel like that's changed a lot. Um, I really do try to, I, I kind of, do you mean like, to, I submit to places that I, you know, either have some kind of relationship like that I've published there before and I have some kind of relationship with the author, I mean, excuse me, the editors, although editors change, so I, I do that. And then um, like if someone asked me, a younger person asked me for poems, I usually try to be generous and, and, and give them stuff. But uh, I try to finish a manuscript, not finish, but I try to, I try to, I don't like write a poem and then send it out. You know what I mean? Like I, I try to have a good chunk of my book done before I start sending them out to to, to journal. I guess part of that question is um, after you've achieved what you've achieved, what, what would rock your boat? Like right now, like, like a publication or, or higher, like what, what, what's, where's the ceiling? Well, I like to do new things. So I, for me, what's like, I've been, do, I just started doing these um, art kinds of poems with art. I, I that's what, I mean, I, I do like trying to do something new. I guess I just really enjoy making things. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Like, I, I guess just keep doing it too. I mean, it's harder, I think, people underestimate how hard it is to continue to be a poet when you have all these responsibilities and kids and life, you know? So I think that that's, that in itself is an achievement. You know, I went through a whole period where I was a single mom and that was really hard and just publishing through that, I, that, that to me is enough. And I wanna just keep, keep being a poet, so. Does that affect like what you write about, for example, what you're writing about now is different from 2008. So wh where was the focus in 2008 when your first book came out versus now? Um, well, that was before I had kids, uh, I was young. Um, I don't know, you know, I think probably learning about language was that's that stars like how do I work with this medium of language how do I make a book you know there's just fundamental things when you're writing a first book that you have to learn so um 
you know, that form, like how do I put things together in a, in a way that's um, interesting? How do I know, how do I get a voice that's sort of um, consistent in some way? How do I, how do I, you know, how do I also, how do I see the world as, as a poet? You know, you're, I think that that early stage is like, how do I be a, how, how can I be a poet in the world? It's just as, you know, I, I don't ask myself that anymore. You know, it's not something that really I think about too much, but you know, that early, those early, that's an important part of um, being a writer, right? It's like um, formally in terms of the book, but also, um, like in voice wise and seeing the world a certain way. So Graham has asked, how do you know when a poem is done? Are there poems you've worked on for years? No, I, and there are some poets that work on poems like Elizabeth Bishop, right? Like she's spent eight years finding the perfect word for a line. Uh, that's just not the kind of poet I am. I respect that uh, way of doing things it's not satisfying to me. I mean, it's just wouldn't, I, it's not what I do. So um, I, I write, I would, so I write a poem and then I let it be for about six months to a year. And then I, sometimes a year would be long and then I revise it. So, you know, sometimes they change right. Like the first poem has a different title and the middle column, I added some things to the end, you know? So yes, I do revise, I revise a lot. Um, but I don't, I don't, I'm not a holder on to, you know, it doesn't take me years to write a poem. And I, okay. I don't have that writer's block. Like I'll be, I can sit down and write a poem. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's uh, finish up with the last question. I want to backtrack when you said, um, wanted to be how to be a poet in this in the world how to get out there now you teach uh you teach college and you've also taught a lot of workshops what do you tell younger poets about how they can get out and be a poet in the world um well i think you no know, they have to experience life right like they have i'm like i think i'm a poet who uh very much lives light or tries to tries to not be afraid of living and like having new experiences and things like that so i think that's an important part of of being a writer um just you know kind of trying things and not that's not just writing you know like having something to write about is important you know like i think that sometimes we for it's what like the beats did really well right like the beat poets they like knew how to to live life, and I think that that's something that's important to to having a, a, an interesting voice. So, yeah. all right, I'd like to uh, thank you very much for coming in, being our feature, and reading and answering our questions. Yeah. And uh, so, here are some of your books. Maybe you can um, mention your favorite indie bookstore that people can purchase these. Oh gosh, um, well you can probably get them from the publishers, right? I think wouldn't be too hard. To, yeah, that yeah. that always helps. That yeah. always helps. You know, uh, just so people know that when you go on Amazon, uh, the poet gets about 15 cents a book and the publisher gets about 25 cents. So if you can get them from the publisher, that'd be super helpful for everybody. Well, thanks a lot. I'm going to shut off the live feed on Facebook. If you wanted to be involved in the open mic, you can log on to the Zoom right now. If you want to be involved in the Q&A in the future, use the Zoom link. And uh, thank you for watching on Facebook Live. And we will now uh, end this part of the evening for you.